behalf of the family, uh, allow me to thank you for, for being here and uh, allow me to open this time with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, there is only one natural way that we know how to think about death, and that is as a loss. In these moments, we welcome you to these place, to this place and these moments. Um, and Lord, we pray for the family and those in this room as we spend time remembering and celebrating a life well lived, that you would indeed allow us some perspective on the rest we believe Gus is now experiencing. May that perspective deliver a peace that passes all understanding. We pray in the name of your Son. Amen. Gus Lease was born November 5th, 1922, and went home to be with his Lord September 4th, 2016. He is survived by Lois, his wife of 56 years, his kids, Brian and Jane, Vicki and Bruce, and Jeffrey and Gabriella. His grandkids, Corey, Kelly, Lori, Logan, and Sophia, and seven great grandkids. I'm convinced that when Gus came to worship services at the church in which I serve, that people looked to see where he was sitting so they could sit near him during the congregational singing time. It's said that people of impact do consistently uh, what others do occasionally. We're here today to admire the life well lived of one who lived his life as an offering to be poured out on behalf of others. The impact of Gus on his family will ripple throughout uh, generations to come. The impact of his life on his students and fellow faculty of 66 years um, and friends reveal that his life was lived as a calling. It didn't belong just to him. It's appropriate, I think, to consider uh, the music and the place not only of Gus's life, but now of his eternal rest. The Bible describes quite a bit in detailed terms what happens in heaven, and it's, much of it is transacted by way of, of music. Gus had a deep and an abiding faith in God, and as a result, I think a little bit of heaven made its way into our lives. It's the family's desire today that as we gather and honor this life, that we make it a time of celebration of his life. And we're gonna do that, of course, by remembering. Remembering is sometimes easy and it's sometimes painful, but it's always the most, one of the most important things we do because it is in remembering that we are particularly living out the design of our Creator. And so over these next few moments, we will remember a life well lived, a life poured out on behalf of others. Gus Leask was born in Sioux City, Iowa. The year was 1922. Nineteen years later, Gus showed his commitment to education when he turned down an opportunity to act in the musical comedy Pal Joey, starring Gene Kelly. In 1945, he taught music at the University of Colorado and then spent four years teaching at the University of Oklahoma. He landed in San Jose in the fall of 1950. Gus Lease constructed a mega choir that numbered 350 voices and performed oratorios and cantatas with school orchestras. He launched an 88-voice men's glee club and one for women with nearly 200 members. Lease produced the first on-campus Broadway show, Kiss Me Kate, and for a year, he had his own local pop radio program on KSJO. In 1967, he began The Gus Lee Show, a variety review that performed for troops all over the western U.S. and overseas for 17 years. From 1984 through 1989, he served as the music department chair. 
He was a faculty member of the Department of History for six years, teaching history of music. He's presently teaching music appreciation in the School of Music and Dance. Thy gold, blue, and white, long may they sail. To thee we sing forever. Whereas Dr. Gusleys has influenced and taught thousands of students over the course of his 71-year university teaching career, and whereas Dr. Gusleys remains strong of voice and young in spirit, and whereas Dr. Gusleys has enriched the San Jose State Campus community through his joyful presence, and whereas Dr. Gusleys has worked at San Jose State University longer than most of us on campus have been alive, although I'm right there. <laughs> and whereas Gus Lee sings the San Jose State alma mater with passion, grace, and beauty like no other, therefore, be it resolved that the Academic Senate of San Jose State University recognize and thank Professor Gus Lee for his extraordinary service to the students of San Jose State University, and be it further resolved that the Academic Senate of San Jose State University congratulates Dr. Gus Lee for reaching the extraordinary milestone of 65 years of service to this great university. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Isn't that a great privilege to be able to serve and teach San Jose State University? The oldest institution of public higher education in the state of California and the what? The best. Best. <laughs> and the best. Oh, San Jose State University. Oh, San, oh, San Jose State. We all do love you. And serve you the best. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Fred Cohen. I'm the director of the School of Music and Dance here at San Jose State. It's uh, my great honor to speak to you briefly today to thank Lois and Jeff Lees for this opportunity. We all know Gus as having been, in his public uh, appearances, you know, the voice of San Jose. Great singer, great spirit. We see him at commencements and homecoming and for years, 66 years. Um, I'm going to talk briefly about Gus as a teacher, as I knew him. He, he came here to uh, teach voice and to kind of start the choral program. And I can say that the choral and vocal areas in the School of Music and Dance are incredibly strong right now. And there's a saying that, you know, what we accomplish is only accomplished by standing on the shoulders of giants. And Gus was such a giant. There are many times in the last couple of years where Gus and I would talk in the hallway. And we saw Gus with the walker. And, and uh, we'd stop and we'd talk, and he'd come to my office, I'd go to his, and we'd talk about teaching, pedagogy. And he had some amazing strategies. I'll share one strategy with you. He would, at the beginning of class, give a little bit of a, information about something that was going to be coming up on a final or an exam. And at the end of class, he'd give another little bit of information about something that was coming up on an exam or a final. And he did this, let's say, instinctually. Well, it turns out that that's best practices, okay? It's something that wasn't dreamed of when Gus started doing this, I'm sure. But we've studied this. We have, you know, pedagogical studies about what is best practices and what is not. And, and Gus was following best practices because he was a great teacher. 
because he loved his students, because he gave this love to his students. He taught music appreciation to non-music majors, right? Uh, people who otherwise would never perhaps have come in to, to a concert. And, and he, would, he would ignite their interests. He would ignite their passions. His classes would fill right away, which is to say within 24, 48 hours of going online, and they would be filled to capacity, and he would take every single one. If someone dropped out of his class, there would be a wait list, someone else would come in. He was incredibly generous, and he was a wonderful teacher. And I think that's, to me, aside from everything else he's done, which is significant and has touched us all in different ways, to me, his soul was in his teaching and in his gift to the thousands of students that Gus touched. So it was a great honor serving with him, and he will be missed. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. I'm Andy Feinstein, the provost here at San Jose State University. And I'm honored to be here today with Gus's friends and family as we celebrate the life and legacy of this remarkable man. Gus has been a ray of light and a cheerful melody at San Jose State for more than six decades. And I feel a resounding loss at his passing. I met Gus early on when I joined San Jose State as Deputy Provost in 2013. He exuded so much pride in being part of our university community for so many years. I have not met anyone else who loves San Jose State more than him. During my first few weeks on campus, Gus invited me to speak at the Phi Kappa Phi Honor Society member inauguration. The event celebrates junior senior and graduate students who have achieved academic success. I told him I was not available to speak, but as many of you know, Gus did not take no for an answer. <laughs> However, and he stopped by my office regularly for the next several months, and each time he had the same request. He was tenacious, but he always showed up at my office with a smile and I eventually agreed to be the keynote speaker. And connecting with students at this event and many others has become a highlight of each year for me. Gus's presence on campus extended far beyond the School of Music and Dance or the College of Humanities and the Arts or the College of Social Science History Department where he taught. His voice has been the sound of celebration for generations of Spartans who listened to his rendition of the national anthem at com commencement each year. His song has always been a moving moment for me at each of the graduation ceremonies that I have attended. His vocals have been the music of victory at countless football games as he led alumni, students, faculty, and staff in her alma mater, Hail Spartans Hail. Gus's enthusiasm was contagious, and I found myself many times singing along with him at many games and events since I've been at San Jose State. In fact, I have a photograph in my office of him singing at graduation that reminds me every day of his devotion to our campus and especially to our students. He was so dedicated to sharing music and connecting with students that even after his retirement, he continued to teach here every semester. I missed him at the spring commencement. I also missed him at our fall welcome address in August. I know if he was there, he would have sat in the front row and been the first to ask a question to our new president, Mary Papazian, uh, if he had been there. I'm told Gus was heartbroken when he called us over the summer to let us know he'd be unable to teach this fall. 
It broke our hearts when he passed away on September 4th. I'm saddened that he's not here with us this fall, but I know his legacy will live on through the many students, alumni, and other campus community members whose lives he brightened through music. I'll remember him every time I hear the first few notes of our national anthem or Hail Spartans Hail, and he will continue to inspire me each time I look at his photo in my office. student of Dr. Lisa's. My name is Robert Berry. And before I read what I prepared, sitting here, I haven't been here for a long time, we do our college juries here as a music major and I as a voice major to four professors sitting there and singing in Italian, German, whatever it was. I, it was hard for me. And Dr. Lisa always got me through. But as I think back, I'm sitting there, I was so nervous about it. I bet he slipped every one of them a 20 because I passed every time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, gee, you know, I mean, he was a great teacher, but I wasn't a great student. So let, let, let me explain a little more. I was 16 when I took my first singing lesson from Dr. Gus Lees. I wasn't much of a singer. I had no tone, no passion to it. 
no commitment. Uh, being a new, I came from a musical family and saw something in me that I didn't recognize in myself. I think a lot of us know that he was a whirlwind. He couldn't stop that man no matter what, right? I didn't practice like I should have. He didn't give up on me. I wasn't engaged in the process of being a good singer at 16, 17 year old, but he didn't give up on me. I wasn't thinking much about college, but he pushed me and helped me get into San Jose State University, and he never gave up on me. I wasn't happy about singing so much opera, although I did it. I liked the art songs better, but he had me sing show tunes, which was kind of unheard of here back in the early 70s. And he snuck me by that way, although I still did everything else, but he knew I enjoyed that, and what, that was a great song for me to hear him sing. He never gave up on me. Dr. Lee saw something in me I hadn't recognized in myself. In 1988, I had a top 10 record, and I was a songwriter on that record. But what means the most to me? Breathe, it says. As I was a singer on that record. I didn't know it until two years ago, but Dr. Lee's played those records each year to every music appreciation class. You see, he never gave up on me. Jeffrey, this is hard. I told you it'd be hard for me. He was a blessing in my life. A true mentor. A man that set an example to me of what true passion for life, career, and family was. And I know a lot of you feel the same way about him. Last semester right here at San Jose State, I fulfilled his wish to bring a CD copy of my album so he wouldn't have to play the tired old cassette he had for a while. As I walked into the classroom, I saw a man that was still in control. That was amazing, 93 years old, right? He had that class in the palm of his hands. He was still passionate about his chosen career and was proud of what he had accomplished in his life. After all these years, I was impressed, to say the least, by the man that I saw. I hadn't seen him for quite a while. He told me to sit down, and, yes, sir. I mean, he told me to sit down. He didn't ask me to sit down. He explained my success to the class and I didn't realize he had followed my career that closely, and that meant a lot to me. Um, then he asked, or instructed me, I should say, to speak to the class, and I gulped, and I said, okay, I wasn't really ready for that. And I thought, you know, what am I going to say to, what is it, a class of 30? It looked like 100 kids in that class to me. It was a big class, and he was handling all these kids and teaching, and, and just, he really had them right there. And I simply said, you never know who is opening the door to your future. You never know what you're capable of until you try. You never think about who's guiding your young life until you get older and you look back. I said, be kind to this man, Dr. Lease. He may hold the key to your future. And he certainly did mine. How am I going to follow that? That was something. <laughs> My name is uh, David McClellan, and back in the day I had always liked to sing, but I was not sure that any would, anyone would like to hear me. <laughs> so some 55 years ago, at the end of the fall semester, I think it was 1961, I wandered around this music building to find somebody I could talk to about my singing. I came to a vocal teacher's room, I walked in and talked to somebody who was there, he asked me to come back the next semester and when he would have some time to hear me. At the beginning of the next semester, I, I could not remember the teacher's name, but I remembered where the room was. The person in the room was Gus Lees. That day changed the course of my life forever. He listened to me, he gave me hope, and I asked if I could study privately with him. Since graduation, I have worked as a singer-actor throughout Canada, the Western United States, and the Far East, starting with the Gus Lees Show. For over 13 years, Dr. Gus Lees was associated with Armed Forces Entertainment, the single point of contact with the Department of Defense for providing entertainment to U.S. personnel and to the lead agency in providing transportation and logistical support for the USO in bringing entertainers to the troops. 
Gus was a person who got his students involved in their singing. I remember the many field trips the Glee Club took to Fort Ord to entertain troops. I remember traveling up and down the western United States to military bases in order to prepare for the Gus Lee Show and for our adventures overseas. I know there were three couples who met, fell in love, and got married as a result of the Gus Lee Show. <laughs> in the Far East and in Europe, the Gus Lee Show was assigned officer escorts. Cupid's arrow struck both officer escorts, one in the Far East tour and one in the European tour. The third couple was part of our troop. And would you believe it? They're still married today. Gus, without question, influenced many lives in many ways. Just look around the hall today. I, among others, are thankful for Gus's insight, wisdom, and encouragement. Miss him? Of course. But in his honor, we will keep on singing. Thank you.
Good afternoon. My name is Sylvia. Jeff is my brother-in-law. Ten years ago, Jeff introduced our families to each other. That's how we met Grandpa Gas, as I would like to call him. We have so many fond memories of him. One that is really, really special to me is when he once asked me, what am I to you, girls? And I said, your grandpa. His response to that was, that's what I thought. You see, my, both my husband's dad and mine, they passed away many, many years ago. And Grandpa Gus was someone we cherished and loved. And my daughters looked to him in this role. So thank you, Kelly, Corey, Lori, especially Logan and Sophia for sharing your grandpa with my girls. Ever since we became family, we spent holiday dinners together. They were filled with joy and many warm memories. My favorite time during dinner was when Grandpa Gas would just stop everything and he would always start the family in singing Jingle Bells. He always had a smile on his face and was always telling us to all be happy. A week before he passed, my oldest daughter, Teresa, had the privilege to help Gus and Lois celebrate their 56th wedding anniversary. Grandpa Gus had requested a single rose to give to his bride. So my daughter went looking for the single rose, just like he wanted it. He sang to Lois as he was giving her the rose. And that is a mem is that's a moment that my daughter will always cherish and be grateful to have been a part of. Thank you, Grandpa Gus, for all the years of laughter. We miss you, and we promise to find the happy in the little things every day. Thank you. Hi. I'm going to read this on behalf of my mom, Emma. I'm going to read it in Spanish first, and then I'll be translating it. Lo recordamos con mucho cariño y respeto por su gran pasión por su trabajo. Nuestros recuerdos son especialmente en las fiestas de cumpleaños, cantando Happy Birthday y las celebraciones del Día de Acción de Gracias y Nochebuena, cantando Jingle Bells. Fuimos afortunados de que compartiera su maravillosa voz con nosotros. Gracias, Don Gas. Le recordaremos y amaremos por siempre. We remember him with love and respect and the great passion that he had for his work. Our memories are especially at parties singing Happy Birthday during Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve singing Jingle Bells. We were fortunate that he shared his wonderful voice with us. Thank you, Gus. We will remember you and love you forever. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Um, that song, Fanny, is one of my favorites that he sang. I must have listened to it a hundred times and cried every single time, and it doesn't get any easier, but, but I find a lot of joy in hearing his voice. Um, thank you again for all being here. Your thoughts, your prayers, your memories uh, that you've shared over the past four weeks have lifted the family up and kept us going. Um, I really look forward to, and I know that the rest of the family does, in sharing memories and thoughts at the reception that follows. Oh, did I turn this? Okay, music was my father's life. He loved teaching. He loved San Jose State University, as you can tell. Most of all, he loved those students. Um, it kept him young. I often walked by the classroom when I attended San Jose State waiting for him to get out of class, and, and I would look in. He just looked easily 10 years younger when he was standing in front of those students. And every single semester when he finished a class, he was already looking forward to the next one and the next group of students that he would have. He'd always say, I've, I've got 
60 students, I've got 70 students, and he tells me of times when they would stand out in the hallway uh, to be in his class. I think the fire marshal probably wouldn't let him do that anymore, but back in the day, they would, uh, they would stand in the hallway if they had to. Some of my most fond memories uh, being around San Jose State were uh, when he would pick me up as a child and I would uh, sit in his office and do my homework much like uh, Logan had the opportunity and Sophia a couple weeks back here as we had to gather some things. Um, I'd go to the student union, play games, um, shoot some pool and bowling and, and then I'd come to find my dad and uh, he was so easy to find because I'd hear him whistling down the hallway. And, and those of you who have been here know that whistle. There, there's nothing like it. And that whistle, he would whistle like that all the time. He would, uh, he'd be in the backyard uh, changing the oil on the car and he'd be whistling. Uh, you know, he did that uh, all the time. He told me San Jose State University was his home away from home. And uh, he loved education. He, he always told me, Jeff, get your education. It's the one thing in life no one can ever take away from you. Whatever you learn in your mind is yours to keep. And he always encouraged us. He, um, he always took care of the family. He made personal sacrifices uh, so the family could have. He often, often went without, you know. He'd, he'd drive a car until the tires darn near fell off. Even though we tell him to get another one, he'd find a way to fix it. And I, I have many fond memories of fixing carburetors and well, everything I know about a car, I learned from him. Um, even a refrigerator, you know, I don't think he got a new one until he couldn't get parts for it anymore. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's the way he was. That's so he could take care of the family. Um, he, was, he was definitely my role model, my rock, my inspiration for higher education. And, and it was an honor to spend those last four weeks with him. I, you know, I'd call him and my mother every day, but, but uh, those last four weeks, I was there just about 24-7. I talked to my brother and sister daily to update them on how Dad was doing, make sure that my mother got the help she needed. And my mother and I were by his side when he passed, which was really a, a great gift. Um, it's an honor to, to, to be by his side like that. Prior to passing a couple weeks, he told me, Jeff, he said, tell people not to grieve. You know, almost 94 years. He said, I've lived a great life. I've done the things I've wanted to do, and I've, I've given so much to people. He told me the most important thing in life is to be happy. And so that's what I do every day is I try to find that happy. You know, there's lots of things that go on. Each day in our lives, there can be challenges, but there's always a sliver of a happy. So remember that quote, each day when you wake up, find the happy. If you find the happy, even if it's just a little bit and you focus on that, everything else will fall into place. So dad loved to hit the high notes, as you can tell. <laughs> he, he loved that and uh, he remarked so many times, well, I think, I think I hit that high note pretty good, and yes, Dad, you did every single time, without fail. I, I always wondered, but without fail. And he loved to lead people in song, whether it was in church or family gatherings or just a meeting. He loved to sing. He said music was everything. He loved to, other, to have others sing. And I'm sure he's leading a choir of angels right now. <laughs> And he loved Phi Kappa Phi, the Honor Society of Phi Kappa Phi. He, he loved that. He loved to get as, you know, as many students that deserve to be in the Honor Society uh, to that initiation and to be part of that. And um, we have a, a, a video here of him singing at a, at a national convention, America the Beautiful. He loved this song. He sung it everywhere. And uh, I'd like if we could honor him and sing America the Beautiful with him. Sing it up to him. Thank you. You're all now initiated into the Phi Kappa Phi Choir. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a beautiful day in the middle of the heartland of the United States. <coughs> oh, beautiful for spacious skies for
listen to the, some of the peaks of his life, some of the relationships that mattered such a great deal to him as a husband and as a father, as a grandfather, great-grandfather, as a professor, as a friend, as a colleague, as a mentor. We wonder and sit in awe of a life that is well-lived. I want to follow my assignment and bring our time to a close, but it occurs to me um, that it's worth considering what was it that caused him to live his one and only life with the kind of purpose and the kind of energy uh, that he did. I imagine it, if he were able to communicate to us today, he would remind us that we have life yet to live and we have a purpose. And I expect that he would say that your purpose has got to be bigger than yourself. It's got to be something that commands your attention and, and your energies and inspires you each day. In the final days of Gus's life, there were some very tender conversations that he had with you, Jeffrey, and with you, Lois, that were very special. And, and in those, he conceded something that was rather unusual for him to concede, and that was that he was, he was tired. There was some weariness that came with 93 years, lived the way that Gus Lease lived his life. I couldn't help when hearing that story be reminded of the words of someone from the pages of Scripture, the Apostle Paul, who towards the end of his life wrote these words. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, and now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Would you pray with me? God of love and of hope, We've gathered to celebrate and to remember one of your best creations. We thank you for Gus. We thank you for the unique gifts, skills, uh, personality traits that you built into this wonderful man. We thank you for your presence in his life. We thank you for touching others through him. We thank you for his vision and for his passion and for his faith and for his love. We gather not just to remember, but in a distinct sense, we come together to commit him to your care now. We ask that you might comfort family, dear family and friends who continue to live our lives with the memory of Gus and the imprint that he left. We pray that your love would indeed follow us all the days of our lives until we too step from this life into the life to come. For it's in the matchless name of our Savior we pray. Amen. The family would like to invite uh, all of us to join them out on the lawn to, for a special time of just greeting one another, sharing words of encouragement uh, to each other. And so uh, the family will leave now. We'll invite them to, to head out before the rest of us leave. If you would just give them a moment uh, to find their way out on the lawn, and then they would love the chance to greet you and uh, to uh, say hello to you. So again, on their behalf, thank you for coming. We were both born in Iowa, Gus and I, so there's uh, just some unique things that have happened in our lives uh, with the music department and uh, with the kids and the variety of interests that Gus had. And uh, it's just, you know, some, someone asked me, uh, how do you remember Gus? I said, how could you forget? 
and uh, his nephew John is here and he stayed with us and, and I was talking with John of Edigel about singing he sounds exactly like Gus and so we have memories to go back to to Iowa actually and uh, for and I think Gus got Mary Jane her first organist job when they were both at Foothill uh, Church in San Jose. She's actually been retired for years, but is going to play as a substitute there tomorrow. Gus is still remembered by people at Foothill Church in the 70s. So he's a legend. And I was a student at San Jose State to get my master's in organ. I hadn't played organ for a while. I got married, had family, and uh, I, there's an ad for a job at Foothill Church. Gus Lease was the music director there. And he did encourage me because I, I just started playing organ again and uh, was working for my masters there. And uh, he was a good friend with their minister, Dr. Phil Barrett. And uh, it, was quite, it was a wonderful job because he, they were both wonderful. Phil Barrett was so good as a, he always appreciated the music and so did Gus. And uh, like he said, well, we have taken trips together. We also did boating with Gus and Lois and Jeffrey when Jeffrey was younger and little. So we've known them ever since 1973 when I took that job. So it's nice. Lois called me Sunday night and I didn't pick up my message until Monday. And she needed the music for how great they are. But uh, anyway, I gave her what I had. So yes, uh, we've been close to the family. It's been wonderful. They've, they've both been great, and Jeffrey too. I've known Gus and Lois for many, many years as not real close friends lately, unfortunately. But you know, kind of grow apart. But Gus was my voice teacher privately for many years and Mary Jane that you just talked to was the accompanist for our for my voice lessons and so anyway I did want to it was always so much fun when you when you have an hour voice lesson where you start off and you're you know you're doing all your uh, you know exercises etc and then at the end like Gus and I always sang soprano baritone duets in full voice just having a wonderful time so it was a great way to have a lesson oh my gosh <laughs> yeah Thank you. That's that's a great memory. It is. It's so it's so joy. He had a beautiful voice and a wonderful personality. He judged for me several competitions that I was chair of. He's just a great guy. Loved him dearly. Miss him terribly. My association with Gus has been over many years. When he's active in the uh, California State Employees Association, and then went on into the uh, California State Retirees Association. But uh, the entire time that I was dealing with him was. We were dealing with political action, trying to uh, uh, improve things for public employees and for the uh, school employees. Gus was always a good fighter uh, on behalf of the of those uh, uh, of state college system and and of uh, California state uh, employees and. Uh, he served on several different boards with him in, in that respect, and and uh, Chuck, or uh, he, he had uh, responsibility for this whole area around the uh, San Jose High College. So. so, how long have you known Gus Lees? Uh, I would say <laughs> for 50 years, anyway. <laughs> I, but I truly was amazed at uh, some of the things that uh, we saw today of what, what he'd done uh, in the past, and uh, we were not aware of those, and I appreciated seeing uh, a lot of the things that, uh, that he had done. So, When you think of Gus Lee's, you just think of a big smile, because he had such an open, wonderful, friendly face. And you can't think of Gus Lee's without thinking of remembering how he sings and the energy he puts into it and the lightness of his face and, and how he just encompasses the whole group. He was um, an absolute model and you could never be fearful of how the song was going to turn out if Gus Lees was leading it. And a lot of times there were groups who couldn't really sing and he would lead the singing and it was successful. 
So that's how I think of Gus Leaves. He was at San Jose State in the music department. I went to San Jose State. I was not a music major, but we all knew him. We all knew him, and he was just a wonderful, wonderful part of this faculty. And San Jose State was honored to have him in the music department, and he made this music department. I played in the orchestra, really enjoyed it, but I was not a vocal musician. But he's a very wonderful man. Privileged to know him. I met Gus. He was a member of our Kiwanis Club in San Jose. And when I joined, he's just absolutely fabulous. Most wonderful voice, always sang our opening song at the meetings, always brought life to the group, and also knew Gus through San Jose State University. My husband graduated from there. Gus Lee was responsible for my husband graduating from the music class because he needed a half one unit. one unit. Gus gave it to him and he graduated so I am very thankful for that. <laughs> anyway, he was a fabulous man. What a fabulous family. Just a wonderful individual. Well, I'm the director of the marching band here, and as you yeah, I, heard I in the memorial, you know, Gus would yeah, sing Hail Spartans Hail at every homecoming for ever and ever. He only had to miss a few, and that was because he was involved with the California State Faculty Association. He was a big deal, so it was weird when he wasn't here. But two years ago, he also sang Hail Spartans Hail. And the thing was, throughout the years, and we're we're talking, for me anyway, doing this gig, 38 of them. When <laughs> Gus would sing Hail Spartans Hail, he would always hold the last note out a long time. And I would tell the band, take a huge breath before the last phrase because I'm going to be holding this note and I'm going to watch his lips because I've gotten used to watching his lips to know when he was going to end the note. Well, the problem was he would fake me out every single time and I would watch his lips start to end the note and I'd cut the band off and then he'd open his lips and the song, the, he would end the note like a second and a half later. And it would just crack me up. And I, I would, you know, I'd bring the horns down like this and I'd turn around and get off the I'd get off the podium and he'd come walking off the field and he always have this this grin on his face. I said, damn it, Gus, you always do this to me. You look like you're going to stop the note and then you keep going. He goes, yeah, I do, don't I? It was totally funny. And then the other thing is, I like to whistle a lot. Gus was a master whistler because he was, you know, a singer and I'm an instrumentalist. But I would always know when he was coming around the hall and I'd have to stop whistling because I didn't want to be in competition with this killer whistler and I even sent him a note that that he got a few days before he passed away I said Gus you got to get better because I'm alone I'm the only one now that's whistling in the hallways and he emailed back and goes well you just got to keep it up or something like that it was pretty funny so anyway we're all going to miss him a lot he was just amazingly cool human being I've worked with Lois at, uh, at Evergreen Valley College for many years. She introduced me to Jeffrey. We became good friends and then he took me home and I got to meet his father. And we became fast friends over the kitchen table, talking to him for hours. Uh, just, I was enthralled. I, I just love to learn from Gus, a great man. Um, I just, uh, every time I could see him, he would, he would ask about my family. He knew everything sharp as a tack I just hope I could you know have that capacity and just have that love of life that that Gus did one of the earliest memories I have of Dr. Lease uh, was I was attending a birthday celebration uh, for I believe for him uh, at his son's house uh, Jeffrey Lease uh, and I just remember there are mariachi and uh, just having a wonderful uh, spirit in, in that house he his spirit filled the room and you could just feel the the magnitude of happiness in that that moment and that is an image that I will always remember of Dr. Lee's uh, and the love that he had for his family um, and particularly uh, his wife Lois and his son Jeff and his grandkids uh, and uh, I just remember always him being 
very vibrant and full of life. And, and so uh, that is something that his son, Jeff Lees, has, has carried on with him. And um, I'm happy to, to have met his acquaintance um, in, the, in, the, in this brief moment. So. Well, I'm going to go at it a little different way. I know Gus through his son, Jeff. Uh, I was uh, chancellor of the San Jose Green Community College District when Jeff became a young trustee. And Gus was his best advocate in terms of going up and putting signs. And that's how I first met. I met this vibrant, dedicated, hopeful human being. Then I learned about, obviously, his love of music. And one of the things I remember was two birthdays ago, maybe it was three, I, I knew they were celebrating his birthday at the home, at his home, and I had to be out of town. So I sent him a mariachi serenata. <laughs> and he had a blast! I remember I got pictures coming back, but I thought, for a man who loves music, giving him a gift of music would be the best thing. But I have to tell you that uh, in addition to his obviously wonderful um, legacy here as a teacher, as a faculty member, his children are a treasure. And I just have to say, Jeffrey Lee's obviously being my the trustee I knew as chancellor. He's a magnificent young man and he wouldn't be the kind of person he is without Gus Lee's. So I thank him for that. So he continues to transform through his children and grandchildren. So. Uh, you know, you don't hear about many people like him anymore. Uh, once in a while you see an individual that is able to transcend two, three, but four or five generations. Uh, that's incredible. And uh, to have been the uh, spirit that he was here. Uh, we both, my wife and I, are, are products of the state college university system. My wife went to Long Beach State, I went to Sacramento State. So it's wonderful to have individuals like him in state universities. Why? Because. <laughs> Well, we usually are poo pooed for not being the UCs and all that. But you know what? When you have individuals like that, who wants the UCs or who wants the Berkeleys and the... Uh, they uh, made it so neat, individuals like him, uh, for us to be able to achieve whatever we wanted to achieve. And as a consequence, uh, he'll always be remembered. Uh, I have known Gus for probably about the last 13 years on campus. Uh, I love Gus. Gus was just such an amazing person. The first time I met Gus or really interacted with Gus was probably about 2003 or so. We were both honorary coaches at a Spartan football game. And so we got to kind of spend a good chunk of the day together going over, you know, at the, at the time the Simpson Center was new and we got the tour and the whole thing. And, uh, you know, I just, I, he was such an easy person to talk to. Um, and so I had a, wonderful conversations with him. But mostly I know Gus from a lot of the work that we did together during our time, during my time as, a, as an active member of the California Faculty Association. Gus had been a very, very active member of the California Faculty Association since before it even had that name because he's been here for so, you know, been here for so long. And, uh, you know, the last time I saw Gus was in the spring and it was probably at a CFA event and that was probably in May. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to uh, see Gus in Washington DC for the NEA conference which he often did and he was scheduled to do but he wasn't feeling so well so he decided not to travel so I didn't get a chance to spend that time with him um, over the over the years you know I mean Gus is just one of those people that he knows everybody everybody knows him but he is one of the most kind-hearted intelligent loving welcoming warmest people ever I mean and he's one of my favorite people and, and I've been I've been teaching here at San Jose State for more than 16 years I'm also a graduate of San Jose State and he is one of my favorite SJSU people of all time ever just an amazing person and so I'm, I'm really you know on the one hand there it's always sad when somebody passes because you're gonna miss them but on the other hand I really want to congratulate Gus and his family because 93 years uh, he had 93 well-lived years. Uh, you know, he contributed so much to everybody's life on this campus. I mean, he had a, an amazing, amazing career, amazing life. And I hope that I get lucky enough to be able to be here 93 years and in good shape like Gus was. Hi, I'm Dr. Kate Sullivan, Professor of Hospitality Management. This is my 29th year at San Jose State, and I have fond memories of Gus Lee's especially his voice. I didn't know him personally, but I was familiar with him through the graduations and through his smile, and especially through our union, which really wasn't mentioned today. Gus was an active union member and fought for people like me that were younger faculty that were being treated unfairly with our salaries within the CSU. And I used to see him at every union meeting with his walker 
and he would attend a lot of the CSU system-wide uh, strike votes and other kinds of union issues and I just appreciated that so much and I'm here today to learn more about him uh, besides his beautiful voice and his strong spirit and I'm just glad to share uh, my memories of him and I'll always celebrate him because anybody that can last here 66 years at San Jose State I'm I'm so uh, so much of an admirer of his so I, I express my condolences to the all of his family. Thank you. You know, my experience with Gus goes back about um, 15 to 20 years with the California State Employees Association, uh, where we both served on the board of directors, um, where I first met Gus. And he was always a, a inspiration and a mentor to me and many others, where he was always accessible, able to explain things and make, it, make a statement of uh, a few words that many listened to. Um, he made an impact and made a difference every single day that we had an experience with him and he's going to be sorely missed but he leaves a great legacy in the in the union world of what, who I represent the state employees that work in the university system and also in higher education overall he was a professor's professor we will miss him I've been active in my union California State University Employees Union and um, I, so I met Gus, you know, when I started getting active uh, about 20 years ago, and um, I uh, was elected to a statewide position. I was I'm the last vice president for uh, California State Employees Association. It's the group that started Calpers back in 1931, and Gus served for a long time on the board. And he was a regional director, and then we he went through a whole bunch of. Um, you know, controversy and difficulty when we reshaped the board and we reshaped, you know, uh, the whole organization. And, you know, Gus was all a part of that. And he kept, he kept, uh, you know, showing up. He kept, you know, whatever uh, new configuration that we made for the board, Gus would show up. He'd show up at the as a retiree um, board member. So uh, he was always involved. He was always wonderful. And, you know, uh, a lot of my memories with Gus are, um, I would go to the uh, my own union's board meetings, and uh, usually in Sacramento, but sometimes down in LA. And uh, as the Gus would come as um, oftentimes the only other CSEA board member, and so whenever my board meeting had closed sessions, the CSEA board members could be in the session. So Gus and I would be sitting alone together, listening to these you know long meetings and, and closed sessions, and uh, you know so he was my my buddy there, you know. And uh, yeah, lots of great memories. His, his energy was wonderful. Uh, and there was a time when I served uh, temporarily as president of CSEA. And so Gus was like the most troublesome board member. It was great because, you know, he always had questions. And, you know, I always had to, you know, allow some time to explain stuff to Gus so that we could move on. And that was fine, you know, he was, but, uh, you know, he always kept you, he kept you on, you know, on point and, and, you know, uh, he was just a wonderful man. His energy was wonderful and we'll, you know, miss him dearly. I've known Gus since the time I came to San Jose State and Gus was a union man in the purest sense of that word. He was at every CFA General Assembly. He would sing at the assemblies. Uh, he was a, he was just a union man through and through. He was CSEA before he was, before we had a faculty union. And then he continued that uh, really until the end of his life. Um, when, when the former director of music violated his contract rights, I mean, he retired, he finished his FERP, his faculty retirement program in 1993, and was teaching one section of Music 10 a semester as a retired annuitant. He worked up to a three year appointment as a lecturer. And then uh, a former chair uh, violated his contract rights because he thought. Gus was too old. Despite having student opinion of teaching effectiveness surveys that were off the charts, students still loved him. And uh, Ed did, thought he was too old. So uh, I filed a grievance on his behalf, and it was denied at level one, it was denied at level two, and a few years later came to arbitration, and I was co counsel of the arbitration. And after Gus completely charmed the arbitrator, of course, and after two days with a chance office lawyer, we settled by giving him his three-year appointment back and he went back to teaching Music 10. And he was teaching Music 10 as, as recently as last spring. And uh, that was the one time that Gus actually needed the union. Up until then, he, 
he gave his union experience to others, but that was the one time when he he needed the union to keep his job, and uh, Gus was, he just was one of a kind. And I, we, we in CFA will deeply miss him. I'd like you to notice that I'm wearing my Spartan cap, and I'm wearing my five Kappa Phi pin, because these are things that Gus always wore. And he's here today as a presence that is informs everybody and inspires everybody and uh, we all have so many memories of Gus and I'd, I'd like to add just a couple. Uh, uh, we all know Gus's wonderful singing of the uh, Hail Spartans Hail, so many commencements. And when the Spartan uh, colors were officially changed from blue and gold to blue, gold and white, I was on the commencement committee with Gus for the stadium commencement. And it was thought that the change could, really couldn't go ahead unless Gus could work those additional syllables into his performance of the, of the song. So we all did a preview. We, sh we told him about it, showed him the lyrics, and said, what do you think? And he said, hmm, well. And then he tried it out and sang it full voice, and he said, I think I can do it. And from that time on, the colors of San Jose State were blue, gold, and white because they had Gus's seal of approval. And we had lots of talks about teaching and about school and about everything, about music. And the last time we talked, we were sharing some stories about class. This was just uh, not that long ago. And his last words uh, after that talk, I still remember, he said, isn't it fun? Aren't we having fun? And that's the spirit of Gus. It's shown in that smile. Be happy. I got to know Gus probably when I first started here. I've been on this campus for almost over 21 years. I became a union activist. I currently serve as the chapter president for the California State University Employees Union. I represent the staff here at the university, which consists of the administrative clerical the custodians, the grounds workers, the healthcare workers, the IT, the administrative analysts. I became involved with Gus in, uh, when we would have uh, meetings outside of the university. It would consist of our, our union, the faculty, the civil service employees and the retirees and that would happen like maybe about three or four times out of the year. We also have meetings uh, outside of the San Jose, so most of the time they would be in Sacramento or, or in Long Beach, and of course Gus was always there representing us. Gus was a very outgoing person, always smiling, always happy, and I became, I got to know him a lot better, and throughout the years, after my parents, both parents, my parents passed away, I adopted him. I said, you're my new dad. And, he just gave me a big old smile and his wife Lois as well and she calls me her daughter so I can honestly say I love Gus, I will miss him but he's always forever in my heart. Well Gus came in uh, to my uh, campaign office one year maybe about 30 years ago and started making phone calls for me and he had such a great way he got every single person he called to vote for me. So I always remember that, and then um, as a representative of the faculty and as a state employees association, he would come in and uh, talk to me about various uh, legislation and uh, other things that affected uh, the state employees and the faculty. And uh, we had a really easygoing, uh, good relationship, friendship, and um, worked with him very hard on a lot of issues. So that's how I connect with Gus, and he was a great guy. He always invited me to lunch or coffee, and we sit down and talk about different issues. And once we finished talking about the issue at hand, he just started talking about San Jose State, because we're both uh, alumni at San Jose State, and we love the school and uh, try to talk about how to make the school better. And that's he talked to me about that every time I talked to him. Uh, just that, uh, you know, let's have a legacy for Gus, and uh, I think it's very important because he was very unique and has so much history here. We have to have that legacy for Gus at San Jose State University. I'm past president of the California State Employees Association. 
I served with Gus on the CSEA board. I'm also a member of the CalPERS board, and we could see Gus sitting down there in the first row every month, keeping an eye on us to make sure we did a good job. Um, he also served, as I said, he also served with me on the board of the California State Employees Association. Um, two, twice I organized our general counsel. And Gus always sang for us. Um, one of the things that we have not, we've decided not to do is hold the uh, general counsel in the future. And I didn't realize at the time, but we did that because it turns out Gus wasn't going to be around to sing for us anymore. Without Gus, it wouldn't be a convention. Yeah. But no, Gus was a great guy, was always thoughtful, um, perfectly willing to tell you what he thought, um, but always in a respectful manner. And I kind of envy the people who had him as a teacher, because I'm sure he was a great teacher. Well, Gus and I started out knowing each other when we were both doing union work. He was on the other side from the union I was representing, and so we always had this kind of teasing relationship. He used to come by my office when I was in the admin building upstairs in counseling services just to give me a hard time. And, you know, I always had a fondness and, and love for him. He's such a good guy. You know, I just told him, I'm sorry your politics are so bad, Gus. <laughs> but he always, uh, he loved this place. And I loved this place. And so it was always like I was spending time with somebody who was kind of special to San Jose State. And of course he could sing, I can't sing anything. But it, it was that he would make the, the effort to always represent the students. And he loved his students. And that to me was really an important thing because I loved my students too. Students are the best thing about this university. Is there anything else you would like to add? Well, I, I would like to say that I, the loss for his family is going to be enormous because he was such an enormous guy. By the same token, he left everybody with such a gift of himself so that we all can sit back and relish in that. <laughs>